What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of Don't Get Your Hopes Up, starring Josh Allen, aka Lore, and his co host, me, Mike, aka B Phony. Today, we're going to be talking about a whole lot of things, so we want to get through this as quickly as possible because I have some pills of eternity I need to get to. So, Lore, how are you doing today? Did you just say you have some pills of paternity to get to? I do. I have some paternity, is that, paternity pills. Is that like Valium? What is Paternity what pills, that? I think, would actually be Viagra, I think. Uh, oh, oh. I think that's how it works, right? Is that oh. how it works? I think so. Oh, dear. I, I should probably look that up. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, oh, paternity dear. Paternity leave and... Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, so paternity pills is actually, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Man, it's made a whole right. new thing. All right. All right, well, good. How's it going? Good. I'm glad we I'm glad we've discussed this now. <laughs> so <laughs> Pillars of Eternity. Yes. That was a game that came out today. It is. Uh it's a game that uh was kickstarted many, many, many moons ago. Yeah. But like it's by um Obsidian, which is formed up from a whole bunch of people that were Black Isle, which made Baldur's Gate. So um, mm-hmm. I haven't picked it up yet, but I'm probably going to. Yeah, uh, it's it's not exactly the type of game I would normally be into. Like I always mm. bitch about, oh, isometric, blah blah, oh, whatever, top down, you know. Well, you know, depending on the type of game, but like, um, it's all, it's like, a, it's a really good, like, their storytelling and the way they do it is really just. It's really immersive. Not immersive. It's just the, the, the way that they deliver story is really well done. Uh, like, mm. put a lot of thought into it. Like, they have the usual stuff where, oh, you find a, you know, you find a recorder or some kind of device or a piece of paper or something that has a note scribbled on it, and that's, like, a chunk of lore, right? It's like a random side like, story. Reads it back to you or something? Yeah, uh, in this case... Some most of the side lore stuff you basically just read, but mm. the way that uh, so basically I'm not really ruining anything for you here. Your character uh, is a watcher. I have no idea what it means. Uh, I'm like a few hours into it, and nobody still knows what it means. Like you're just trying to figure it out. But so everybody calls you this, but nobody knows why they call you that. Yeah, they're just like, well, they're like, yeah, you're a watcher. You have these special abilities, but we don't really know what it means. Uh, <laughs> so uh, well, good. It, it's, kind of, it's kind of like a witch or something, you know, it's like one of those things. It's like, you're a witch, yeah, you do like magic oh. stuff. So anyways, um, whenever uh, certain areas or certain, like there's certain areas or um, people that you can talk to, like they'll have like an aura about them uh, and it'll like jump you into this weird like kind of soul, like a whole screen will change color uh, and it'll give you the story of like like some memory that they had uh, either them or maybe in a previous life or something. And it's just really, usually it's this really great kind of uh, just memory. And you're basically reading back and reliving. In some cases, you're actually uh, reliving the moment with the person in that memory. Um, and it's all, it's all written stuff, um, but it's really, really good. Nice. The action is pretty neat. It's, um, it kind of has a, oh man, what's that game? Uh, Dragon something. Uh, that does not narrow it down at all. I'm sorry. That Dragon was like, Age? No, not Dragon Age. Dragon Knight? Uh, no, it's it's a top down, uh, turn based sort of. Dragon. dragon oh, hold on, hold turns. On. Let me go. Let me go to Dragon, 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 Dragon on my list. Let's see. Uh, Divinity Dragon Commander. There we go. Uh, or original Divinity. sin. Original sin. I think is what it was. I don't know. One of those two. Anyways. Divinity Dragons. Yes, it was a dragon game. Divinity Dragon <laughs> Dragon Sins. You basically run around like an like an action RPG, <laughs> right? But uh, right. whenever you get into an encounter, you have the ability to pause and give commands to your units. That's pretty oh. much, that's the gist of it. I am suddenly significantly less interested in this game. Oh, <laughs> I like, really don't like that mechanic. Your well, your units are. Uh, it's it's not an action RPG like Diablo, like where you basically you run into a group and you just start like hacking and slashing. Like you could basically strategize with your party, which you know I'm only a couple hours in, but you know I have a party of like four people. Um, and I could position them in certain ways. I could actually change the formation. I could dress them up in whatever gear I need them to be in and swap weapons. And there's, there's a ton of stuff I could do, but it's, um, it's very, yeah, it's, it's definitely very, um, more, more strategic than, uh, than an action RPG for sure. Like way more. I think I have some sort of 
irrational hatred built up for games that use pause as a central mechanic. Like, it drives me nuts. I don't like it. Even when I play FTL, I, like, refuse to pause things, and I will just die <laughs> versus pausing the game to... Hardcore mode! Yeah, like, I... It just... Like, that was the biggest thing that I... Now, maybe it's just because Dragon Age was garbage, but that was the biggest thing that I hated about Dragon Age, was the mm -hmm. pause, dick around for a while, three seconds of fighting, pause, dick around for a while, three seconds of fighting, and it just, like, to me, it always makes it feel like the fights are now lasting three or four times longer than they should be. Uh-huh. And that, like, I get bored. I'm like, I, I've been on this boss encounter for 30 minutes now, I'm tired of this. Now, you don't, you so don't maybe, have maybe, to. So maybe, maybe, maybe Pillars of Eternity does it better? So you, you don't have, you can actually disable the whole pause mechanic, and, and you can run slow mode if you want to. So mm. it goes into fight, it slows things down at 50%. Um, so it has basically like three speeds. 50% regular, and then like 200% or something. Um, right. Which is really great for just kind of traversing like through towns and stuff, you know, because the, the, they're not small. Well, the first one I'm in, it's not small. Um, so you kind of zoom around, which is kind of nice. But uh, yeah, you don't have to use the pause mechanic. Uh, it, it automat it's basically set up to automatically pause on when you engage with an enemy. And you could actually have it in like uh, have it pause for like a number of things. It's like setting notifications on your phone for like various apps. You know, it's basically what mm -hmm. it is. It's like trigger pause when your uh, one of your party members sees something, or one of your party members gets below a certain percentage of health. Um, right. But you could turn them all off and just not have pause at all if you wanted to. Yeah, but is that like like turning it all off and never using the pause in FTL? Because I mean, is it the sort of like, well, you can do this, but you're so, going to lose and die a lot. I mean, maybe thinking about it now, like I probably could have gotten through now that I understand the mechanics and how they all work. I definitely could have gotten up to the points where I'm at right now hmm. without utilizing pause. I probably would have died a bit more like there's a bear that you're going to that well, if you end up playing it, but there's a bear that you encounter that's pretty rough. Um, I died once to it, um, but I'd imagine if I didn't use the pause mechanic to really kind of look at the surroundings and see if there was something I could work with and whatnot, then I probably would have died a couple more times if I figured it out. But yeah, you don't, you can succeed in the game without pausing for sure. Uh, it's just like FTL where your turns, like your swings have a timer on them, you know? So your attacks, just like, FT, exactly like FTL as a matter of fact, like, you know, if, you're, if, you, if you take a swing at somebody... You're gonna have a you know X amount of seconds till your next swing, and then in that time you could actually swap out that swing for another ability. And uh, as far as I could tell, like if I want to change from my auto attack swing to a knockdown for my warrior, that or my fighter, then uh, it would just change the icon to what ability it is, but it won't reset the timer. So that's kind of neat. I don't know if all the abilities do that. Some of them might like reset it, but um, mm. yeah, you could play it in real time. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll I will still give it a try because it does sound like a ton of people have been really really into this game mm -hmm. and like I I haven't really given a game that uses that sort of combat style a chance since Dragon Age. I really did not like Dragon Age. I'm, <laughs> the, that is one of like I Wait, get which, which I get Dragon the, Age? any of them. Oh. I, <laughs> like I played I I never actually played the second one. I hated the first one so much. Like, I just got so bored mm -hmm. playing that. Yeah. And, like, for me, the problem... With the, for me, the problem with the first Dragon Age was I started off playing it, like, quote-unquote, normally and doing the... You've got to pause in the middle of combat sometimes and you've got to switch around to the different characters and do stuff. And you need to set up all of their, like, AI so that they do things that make sense and you're dicking around in menus a whole bunch. And I got so ridiculously bored of that. Like, that was just... It felt like work to mm -hmm. me. Because I was interested in the storyline. And I was interested in what was going on and, like, sort of playing the get better stuff for my character sort of game and, like, fleshing out my character some more. I did not give one single shit about any of the other characters and what they were wearing <laughs> and so on. I did not care. Like... <laughs> it's just I I don't care what the other people in my party are doing. So yeah, I, I that's so funny, man. Like so I so like go ahead. 
So like eventually I was like, oh, I can just put it on easy, and then that way I can play just my character, and the other dudes will run around and do whatever and probably die, and I don't yeah. care because it's on easy and I can get away with it. And then I spent like six hours of gameplay time in the like the mage tower bit where you're like in the fade and trying to fight your way out and it's like got that blur effect going on constantly and I, I i spent like six hours in there and i forgot to save and i died and i lost all of that and i was like well i'm never playing this again <laughs> this is this is not going to happen uh, yeah i wouldn't I wouldn't be. I, I I actually have never played any of the Dragon Age games either. But it was mm. mostly because it was medieval fantasy, and I was too busy with yeah, yeah everything else. Mass Effect, you know. Yeah, exactly. I think part of the reason that I didn't like Dragon Age very much is because Mass Effect came out, mm -hmm. and like I was pl I'd been playing a ton of Mass Effect, and Dragon Age came out kind of. I don't remember exactly when Dragon Age came out in comparison to Mass Effect, but I definitely had played Mass Effect first. So I was used to that style of RPG yeah. where like my character says stuff, and then it got into Dragon Age, which was you pick a line of text, and then it just is implied that that's what your character says, and mm -hmm. all the voice acting is everybody else. Yep. And it just felt super weird, bland and not immersive to me. Yeah, and also it was medieval fantasy, and I just, I, a medieval fantasy has to really, really, really hook me for me to want to keep playing it. Yeah. It's just a, a genre that I think is a bit overdone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, it's hard to say, like, if this game would be for you, because, like, uh, I'm a bit taken aback because it's not a game that I would would want to so i was kind of like at you know this week you know we had uh you know well today as of today we had um close of eternity the new poe uh and uh bloodborne yeah and i was like i was torn it's like i have to get one of these games but i can't i can't afford both i'm gonna throw money at both and not play one because that's exactly what's gonna happen and so it's like uh well you know poe Bloodborne wins on one front because I could use a controller. The problem mm. is, it's the PS4 controller. <laughs> and, I don't mind the PS4 controller. And, and I have to boot up the PS4 uh, and use it here at the computer, which is like kind of a pain in the ass. You swap and source. Oh, and yeah, because you still have your PS4 sitting at your computer, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So From Destiny. From Destiny, yeah. Destiny. And Helldivers awesome little shitty game which is it's actually pretty cool um mm. and then on the uh and then on the other side there is poe which is like this game everyone is talking good stuff about which everyone said a bunch of stuff about bloodborne of course too but um it, it, it was accessible it was easy i could just have it running right here in the background whenever you know and it pauses all the time which is like oh god i hate that. I, I don't i'm not a fan of that mechanic either you know ftl is really the only game i've played that has it that i had any longevity in um and, well, and like uh, at least in FTL, the pausing feels like it's like you want to pause because it's saving you because you're losing track of what's going on. Whereas the problem I had, at least in Dragon Age, was that the pause was like it, it felt like I had to pause constantly because my teammates were too stupid to do what they should be like yeah, yeah. It, it felt it felt to me like the game designers were too lazy to create AI that worked. So instead, I had to do all the work for them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ugh, I can see that. But yeah, but, um, give it, just give it a, give it a look. Uh, yeah, definitely. Maybe I'll watch it, it, it's kind of a, I mean, it's it's kind of a hefty, you know, buy-in. That's why I was like, it's I mean, it's a fifty dollars game, and so it's Bloodborne. Yeah. So it's like, uh. Yeah, maybe I'll watch a um a let's play or something on it for a little bit and see mm -hmm. see if it's something that interests me. Bloodborne is another one that I was like, <laughs> I actually didn't, I heard a ton of people talking about Bloodborne and about how it was hard, and I was like, oh, this sounds like an interesting game, and it just hadn't occurred to me that it was a Dark Souls game. <laughs> but it was, and I was yeah, like, it was, it's not, it's not a Dark Souls game, like, uh. Right, but it's like the same developer, and it's sort of in a similar, like, uh. Oh, yeah, vein. yeah, totally. Like, it, it is a Dark Souls-ish game, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh. 
but but I think it was the same developer, right? From think, software? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the same developer, but it's yeah. um but it's uh I I've heard I've heard mixed I I've heard everyone says they love it. But I, like in terms of difficulty, and it could just be like some guys are being dicks about it. It's like, "Oh yeah, it's not as oh, it's not as hard as Dark Souls." <laughs> yeah. Know? But yeah, I don't know, like I Dark Souls to me is another game that I, I've never I've never played Dark Souls or Demon Souls. Um uh-huh. I have seen a bunch of like videos of um I think mostly Demon Souls. Uh and I've always sort of looked at it as a game that's like, huh. Well that's a game that some people are into. This is a very niche title that I will not like. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So like I heard about Bloodborne and a bunch of people were talking about it and how it was hard and I'm like I generally enjoy games that are difficult and challenging. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, this sounds interesting to me. I I, I should look into this game and I was like looking at like screenshots and videos of it and it just hadn't occurred to me this entire time that it was a Dark Souls game. Uh and then I was reading I was like I'm going to read a review about it and I went and looked it up on like Polygon or something and it was like the spiritual successor to Dark Souls and Demon Souls, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, suddenly my interest in this game more or less evaporated. Like, I, it's, it's funny, like, it's a game that I understand why it, why it's, it appeals to people, and normally when I can understand the appeal of a game, I can also enjoy that game. Yeah. But I don't think that I would enjoy a game that's purposefully obtuse. Like, that's on purpose kind yeah. of difficult to figure out. Because mm-hmm. that just goes against every game design bone in my body. <laughs> like, no, it needs to be understandable to the player. And if the player doesn't know what they should be doing, then the game design has failed. Yeah, and, the, you know, that's that's funny. Like, I, I completely agree in... So in the first Dark... I played the first Dark Souls. Uh, I didn't beat it, obviously. Mm. Uh, but I feel like I got pretty far, or it could have just been I spent a lot of hours on it, getting to the point to where I ended up uh, leaving my character indefinitely. Um, <laughs> but the first boss you face, and I don't know, if maybe I didn't read some quest text or something, or a rune with some inscription on it that maybe told me what to do, but the first boss is, like, fucking hard. Uh, and you have to... I, I, and I'm sure you could probably kill him on your own, but you're not gonna. That, that's not something that's gonna happen on your first, second, or maybe even fifth try, because he hits yeah, cause hard. Yeah, it's like you you've have to gotta... like leave the room through a side exit, and then come back around and like drop the chandelier on him or something. I don't know what it is, but basically you kill him with like some kind of physics object or something, right? Isn't that what it was? I'm fairly certain it was that. Like you don't. You basically don't come back in the room with like a bigger sword and start whipping his ass. That doesn't happen. <laughs> like you, you use something else against him. And I was like. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting, but, like, that's, you, you could basically sit there and kill yourself over and over again trying to kill this thing, and nothing is pointing you to it. Like, am I might just, I guess it's telling me I need to explore more, regardless of whether or not I'm in a boss fight, you know, and break myself from that mold. Like, that, okay, I can respect that, but I, I get it. Like, if it's hard, if it's shitting on you just for the purpose of shitting on you, and you're not learning anything... <laughs> Yeah, well, like, like I like games that are really... I, I like hitting a challenge that I can get kind of frustrated at yeah. because I know that it's my own fault. Like, I, I can see what I need to do, and I'm just not quite pulling it off. So, like, Trials, for example, mm-hmm. is a game that I will play the living shit out of in levels that are ridiculously difficult to get through because I'm like, okay, I know this is possible. I know that there is some combination of flailing around on the the thumbsticks <laughs> that will get me through this section. Yes. Yep. But or like it'll be one that you've got to like on um on Trials Frontier on my phone, like it'll be okay, I've beaten this track before, but now I have to get it under this time. I have to get a gold medal on it under this time with no faults in order to progress to the next part of this quest chain or whatever. And I will just sit there and do that for four hours straight and just wipe constantly uh, and resetting constantly because I'm like, okay, I know it's possible. I know that I can do it. 
and eventually I will. I just got to keep practicing and keep trying and keep practicing and keep trying and <laughs> rage at it for a while. <laughs> That's the sort of like I really enjoy that sort of gameplay. It's the sort of like, <laughs> um, it's the sort of thing that I'll be like, str- like uh, it, when I used to stream a ton. I would be streaming something like that and just getting mad and raging at it and people in my chat room would be like, you should you should take a break. You're obviously getting very upset about this. And I'm like, this is how I enjoy this. <laughs> yes. This is what's enjoyable about this to me is getting mad at something that's very difficult. You, you, know, you know what it is, for, for me anyways, um, the distinction between those punishing games that, that like I normally play, and I know you play a lot of them too, uh, and like the Dark Souls and the Bloodborne's, is that when I fuck up, I immediately get to try again. Uh, yeah. Trials, uh, Super Meat Boy, Stealth Bastard, Hotline Miami. Yeah. I could go on for days. Like these are oh, games man, that when you fail, you instantly get to go again. There's no load screens. There's no load times. Like you just go again and you try. And it's like you have you 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 build a rhythm. You try to figure it out, and then you get good. And then you go back and you do the whole thing over again. And Trials is the best at this because yeah. you 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 go through a track, you have checkpoints, and you repeat the same checkpoint a fucking hundred times, and then you finally get through, and then you get to the end with three hundred faults, and then you do the whole thing over again, and you do it this time in thirty faults. Yeah, and it's and then that's how you get better at that, and that that for me it's an immediacy of it. You could restart a track in Trials in like 0.5 seconds. It's zero yeah. time at all. Uh, even reloading the entire track after you finish it takes no time at all, you know. But yep. it's it's uh, what I've seen from Bloodborne and obviously from having played Dark Souls is there's when you run out somewhere and you fail, you're penalized and pushed back to like whatever your last save was or your the last campfire you set up at or whatever, you know. Yeah. And you're just like, oh god, I had to run up. I had to run up this stupid staircase. I have to hit this guy I always hit every single time. He's going to fly off the thing. And I have to fight the thing that actually killed me. Yeah. In yeah. summary, these two games came out. I haven't played either of them, <laughs> but they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's basically what's going on right now. Is I'm, I'm At least me. Like, I know you've played Pillars of Eternity now at this point. Yeah. But I haven't played Pillars of Eternity or Bloodborne, and I'm basically just sitting here whining about how bad these games I've never played are. Get off my lawn, games! You know what? You know what? It's the internet. I'm entitled to whine about things I am not qualified to have an opinion on. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. Um... No, I I, I think I probably will check out Pillars of Eternity, though. If for no other reason than I have been like itching for a new game to mm-hmm. poke at lately yeah. like i'm still playing a ton of wow um i'm still playing a ton of trials on my phone uh which by the way i'm getting alarmingly good at trials on my phone really like, oh yeah Ugh. like the touchscreen controls i think i am better at than i ever was with an actual controller <laughs> like i'm now for a while now, I've been in the top one percent of the overall Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame, uh-huh. uh huh. And I regularly will get times on individual tracks that are like sub one percent. And I'm like, yeah, look how cool I. And I usually like take a screenshot of it and post it on Twitter because I feel like <laughs> I feel like I need to tell people that I'm good at something. <laughs> <laughs> Look, guys, that's no video game. <laughs> I, 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 I can still do. I can still do it. I, I can still do it. I, I still got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I've been playing uh, Odd World recently too. New and Tasty just came out mm-hmm. on Xbox One today. I think. Yeah, Maybe I saw the. Tomorrow. I saw the. I, I saw the ads. I mean, I saw the guy from Odd World, and it's like that's a yeah. throwback right there. Yeah, um, it's been out on PS4 and PC for a while now. Um, and it was, it's actually, might still actually be, uh, free on PS Plus. Um, so I, I picked it up through there and that's really, it's like, I sunk a ton of time into, um, the two Abe games on my PSX ages ago. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus. I'm really hoping they do a remake of Abe's Exodus too, because it was the better of the two games in my opinion. But Yeah. Abe's Odyssey, still really fun, still really good, still still difficult, but in the sort of, like, difficult, but I know what I need to do sort of sense, which is good. Yeah. 
Like, I just need to actually make this thing happen. <laughs> Which is nice. Are you sure you're good enough at video games for that kind of stuff? I don't know, man. <laughs> Fortunately, when you die, you get to restart right away, so I can just keep trying over and over. Actually, I guess there's a little bit of a delay. You have to wait around for these birds to fly off, but... <laughs> yeah. No, literally, you have to wait around for birds to fly off. Huh. Yeah, I've not played it. Uh, it was uh, it's one of those games where I recognize it because I you know I was I I owned a PlayStation and um, yeah I remember seeing on the front cover like PlayStation magazine and everything. But my my PlayStation was basically for like random RPGs and uh, uh, Jet Moto of course and Gran Turismo, and mm. that was like it. That was that was that machine was actually pretty much the Gran Turismo machine, also yeah. supplying other forms of entertainment whenever you know. You get tired of your forty-hour endurance courses. Yeah, Basically and I've been feeling. Was. You're talking about Gran Turismo now. I'm feeling some. I've been feeling a driving game lately. Mm. I need to. I need to get into one of those. What kind? Like, it, do you do track or dirt? Uh, either really. Usually, track is sort of like I spent a ton of time on Need for Speed when I was younger, specifically Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. The game was so good. Oh, man. Yes, it was. Oh, man. It was so good. <laughs> uh, but also, like, Gran Turismo. But the... Oh, and Burnout. Oh, my God. Burnout. <laughs> oh, man. I miss Burnout. I miss Burnout. I miss Burnout mm. when it was good, before they did the stupid Burnout Paradise. Like, Burnout 3 was, in my opinion, the best driving game ever created. Wow. It was so good. And then they came out with Burnout Paradise, and they were like, it's open world now. And I was like, this is garbage. And I was sad. <laughs> but it's because it's the same exact problem that we were just talking about a minute ago. Like, when you lose at something, you want to be able to just restart it again. And the problem that Burnout Paradise had was since they made it open world, you had to, like, drive to the start of a race. Oh, And if yeah. you lost that race or just you knew that you weren't going to win it, you had to like abandon the race and then drive back to the start again. And like it was annoying because I like I feel like their idea was, well, you'll lose, but now you're gonna be out over here somewhere and you can just try whatever one of these other races that's nearby is, which is cool, but I don't wanna do those. I wanna try the one that I just lost again because <laughs> I wanna I wanna beat it. <laughs> it's like look, look, look. I don't wanna be able to tell you this, but I guess I have to. You're not going to finish this race. Why don't you try one of these other ones? We put you <laughs> That's basically what I'm hearing. Yeah. Oh, man, yeah. Those there were some good games back in the days there. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's funny. Like, it's, it's looking at um, yeah, the, the theme of being able to immediately restart and, and go back and do it. It's, it's funny. I, I almost sound like a... Like, I'm just some impatient, like, asshole, you know? It's like, oh, I want to do it again. Just, no, I don't want to wait for the low times, whatever. Like, it's... <laughs> Part of me is. And it's one of those things, is like, if I'm playing, because I, I, I definitely... It's funny, I've logged quite a few hours in Dark Souls. Uh, mm. But again, not really getting anywhere. Um, and I always, like... Every time I've, I've said, fuck it, I just quit again. Uh, was because of the low time because I'll die and I'll be back somewhere and I just, I'm just like done. But there are people who have the tolerance, man. Clearly, because everyone saying Bloodborne is the greatest thing ever, and I've seen people play it. Uh, I guess maybe they're pretty good because they didn't die a lot, and um, it looks fun. It looks cool, but that's good for them. <laughs> guess. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Vessel. Yes. So, Vessel, um, someone peeped me about Vessel, like, a few months ago, and they are kind of just getting the whole PR thing. Uh, I think I got, like, an email or something. Um, and I immediately was just like, it's not going to work, and I just kind of threw it out. I was like, whatever. Um... Because there's a lot of sites that try to do this. Everyone's, every once in a while you get a site with a lot of funding that tries to take over uh, or you take a chunk out of YouTube. Yeah, because basically Vessel, from my understanding, is it's like somebody said, said, what if we had Hulu Plus, but instead of TV shows, we had YouTube content creators on there? 
Yeah. And it is actually is the Hulu guy that's uh, oh, well, that's, that's, that's doing this. It's kind of funny you say that. I'm fairly certain it is. <laughs> so what if the Hulu guy Did you said, not know what that? if I do this? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah. Here he is. A former, former Hulu boss, his new startup, Vessel. Yep. Oh, there you go. That is really funny. I I understand where he got the idea from. So that. now now go ahead and explain why you said that because that's a very that's a very good point. I don't even remember what I said. Uh, the, oh, the that is Hulu. The, yep. Yeah, because you you have to pay a monthly fee to have access to this thing, and once you do, you get basically YouTube videos. It's yes, yep. Uh, I mean, I guess it's free for a year if you got in early, and I don't know if that's still mm. going on. But um, that is, I mean, I'm looking at my account right now. I have an account on there, and I'm looking at it, and it's pretty shitty. Like, mm. uh, right now, the top of my screen, uh, I'll just describe it to you. Um, it's a VOD, a Twitch VOD like, thumbnail, like a video from Syndicate. Um, he's playing a game, and that's it. Like, he's got his face cam in the corner, uh, and whatever other branding I'm sure on here somewhere, it's cut off, but... Uh, it's it's like I'm not gonna pay for Twitch vods, <laughs> and that's basically what it is. And, and C Nanner is basically the same thing. Like everything he does is basically uh, a a vod of some sort. It's all his face in the corner, uh, and um, yeah, that's it. It's n there's no production at all. Yeah, IGN is on here. Uh, a couple other people are on here. I mean, you can watch Dance Moms if you want, dude. <laughs> Get nice. down with it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it seems like the sort of idea that would work if YouTube rolled out a subscription service kind of like Twitch has. Mhm. Mm where you can say, "Oh, you know, I really like Epic Meal Time or something, so I'm going to subscribe to Epic Meal Time." And Epic Meal Time will now give me subscriber benefits in some capacity or a, yeah, I I will give them money because I feel like it. Um but I don't like if I'm just gonna get the same content or similar content to sooner. what I would get. That's on, the biggest thing is sooner. You get yeah. a week sooner in some cases. In some cases. Yeah, I guess, and I guess it's only like three bucks a month, so I can sort of see like someone being like, "Oh my god, I am the biggest Sean Anders or Cena, however that's pronounced, fan in history." So I desperately need to see his new face in a corner video. <laughs> the the instant that it exists in some capacity, I will pay my three dollars a month. But even then, like I feel like that's the sort of thing that YouTube should roll out, where that like yep. then YouTube can give you a publish option on your video that says publish to subs first, unlock for everyone else two days later, and that would that would that would make YouTube a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and so that's that's like the thing. It's like I can't see why people would pay money to get, and I think I said on Twitter like R R Ray William Johnson videos and Dance Mom videos early, like a week early or something. Uh, yeah, or just just get them at all. Uh, even it is even if it is a week early, um, the core of it is the fact that it's not YouTube. Why would I go to another service? Yeah. For this, it, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. And people, as one person said, uh, and you know, I I super appreciate that he, that he's looking at us from this perspective. Like, well, if they're CPMs or as if they're basically they're paying their creators as much as they're saying, and that's awesome. It's like, yeah, that is awesome. The problem is, as a creator, I have to look at, oh man, twenty dollars CPMs. Holy crap, boner, right? Yeah. Oh, but I'm also gonna lose. Like eighty percent of my viewership because yeah. I'm swapping to this. Yeah, twenty twenty dollars CPM doesn't mean anything if you're getting twenty viewers. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, and it's also sort of like the. I feel like a very large portion, if not the majority, of the YouTube audience aren't the sort of people who will necessarily say, "I'm going to watch this video the second it goes up." It's the 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 minute a new video comes up from my favorite YouTuber of choice, I'm going to watch this brand new video. I feel like a lot of people will, and a lot of the views that uh, a lot of creators get, um, are the sort of like, I've discovered this YouTuber, they will interest me for a couple of days, and then I will forget about them. 
or I have come across this YouTuber and now I'm going to watch every video they have in their library and it doesn't r really at that point matter. Like if I, if I was just discovering your YouTube channel, mm -hmm. it would not matter to me in the slightest if a brand new video was going to come out tomorrow or in five minutes because there's like a billion videos. There's, there's a billion Mike B videos that I could have access to right yeah. now. Like I could go watch the entire Don't Starve series and by the time I got through all of that, it, it would be two years from now. Like, it would take forever <laughs> to actually watch all of that. So to me, it doesn't seem really like, and I'm not saying that there aren't viewers who will sit there and like, they've already watched every single Mike B video and they're just waiting for the next one to come up and stuff like that. Those people certainly exist, but I feel like a large portion of the YouTube audience is that sort of. I found your videos and I'm going to watch every single one of them and now I'm going to forget that you exist until the next time I remember at which point I will watch every single one of your videos that has come out since then. That is goddamn god yeah woo goddamn <laughs> that is absolutely perfect that is that is <laughs> I, yeah, uh, clearly I relate to this. I don't know if you're, get, if you're getting that vibe, if you're getting that from me, right? You feeling that? Uh, yeah. It is, that is so true. I I follow so fucking many people on YouTube, and a lot of them, they just stem from, like, I'll just I'll find a video I like, and I'll watch a few, and then I'll be like, boop, subscribe, and then I'll come back, I'll be like, oh, crap, yeah, this guy's got, like, a ton of new videos, sweet, I could just marathon a bunch of this guy's stuff. And then, and that's it. And that's, that's how I use YouTube. There's so much content out there uh, that it's, it's, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not a hardcore one person thing. Like I don't, there's not a single person on YouTube that I've seen like every video of that I could think of. Uh, if I have, it's not gaming. Um, probably something stupid, like, I don't know, something stupid, but uh, <laughs> it's, yeah, that makes that. That's exactly the way. I, I mean, a, a lot of people probably do the same thing too. Yeah, it's like web comics, right? Like, there's. I used to read every web comic that I followed. I would read it every single day. Then I got a job where I actually had work to do, and I couldn't do that anymore. So now, when I read a web comic, like I'll read Penny Arcade, and I I would say that I to a degree keep up with Penny Arcade. But the way that I do that is by forgetting about Penny Arcade for a month, two months, three months at a time, <laughs> and then going back and reading every single one of them back to the point that I last was reading it. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's the sort of viewer that will never use something like Vessel because I don't, I don't care if I get to see tomorrow's Penny Arcade when I remember that Penny Arcade exists because there's 30 strips that I have to read. <laughs> Yep. No, and that's true. Uh, video game donkey. He's a perfect example of this. Oh yeah. He's oh, a, yeah. Uh, wow, so perfect. It's like he'll he'll have a video, and mostly it's his league videos that catch me, and I'll watch, and then I'll catch up on other videos. Uh, but I, I obviously have not seen all of them. But then, like recently, there was the the amazing, amazing Skyrim video. Did you see that? Mm. -mm. Oh my god. No, I I'm in the forgetting that video game donkey exists phase. <laughs> I'm on that side of the I'm on, I'm of, in that of part the of the cycle. <laughs> give me give me another month or two and I'll I'll swing around to the watching every single one of his videos phase. It's yeah, it, it but it but it hit like it was like front page of Reddit and I was all like and I was like, "Oh man, I know this guy." Yeah, let me go and right now what the video was amazing. Uh and then I was like, "Oh yeah, I'll watch a few more of his stuff." But yeah, that's that is so Spinning this back into Vessel, like, Vessel, it's, it's serving a need that is, and, you know, this could be a very profitable niche market, um, but it's, it's, it's a group of people who are staying up to date on current stuff. So, like, <sighs> Scene Anners and, uh, frankly, Epic Meal Time, right? And a ton of these that are basically, like, all these unboxing, I mean, there's a freaking... Dreamcast unboxing video on here like uh, I yeah, okay. No, but like IGN's got news on here um, There's a couple other like the verge has got some news on here, and it's like okay that stuff I Could see paying for a curated uh, Allotment of it, but some of the video game stuff like it's just not gonna it just doesn't it's it's yeah like unless I'm like a 12 year old with like a Minecraft addiction 
Like, and I need to watch every single video that Skyasi or like somebody or like Yogg's cast puts out. Like, I'm just not going to really yeah. need to be on top of that kind of stuff. Yeah, and like there's certain types of content that'll work for that. Like if you're doing a news show, n- news show, that almost sounded like I said a nudes show. You could do a nudes show, yeah. Uh, maybe you can do that on this Just keep one. it current. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, but like if you're doing a news show on, on YouTube, then something like Vessel would make sense for that. Or if it was like uh, you were trying to do like a YouTube drama series that rolls out on a weekly basis like a uh like a tv drama like elementary or something like that then like that would work but i don't think many people are even trying to do that right now because that's just not how people consume content on the internet like the idea look at what like hulu and netflix and everybody basically even playstation now is coming out with their own individual content and what they're doing at least for like hulu and netflix is they'll say oh yeah house of cards here's an entire new season we gave it to you all at once because we know that's how you guys watch video yes. on the internet. We know that this is what you, you don't want to remember to come back next week. You want to watch this entire season in one sitting because that's how oh, people man. consume content on the internet. So to me, the idea of, oh, you, you can get the next video a couple of days early is almost entirely worthless. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, this actually just came up recently. So... I know that I am I, I'm I'm kind of a dickhead in this respect. Um but in most respects, really. In most respects, yeah. In this one, kind of though. Uh, only kind of, okay. Only kind it. of, yeah. So whenever I, I I'm sitting on like a shitload of footage from like Shizzle and and, and you guest star on some of it too. Uh, oh good. Our, oh, uh, is this is this space engineer? Parading around in space, yeah. Oh uh, god. <laughs> Please continue to sit on the footage that I'm in. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> don't worry. <laughs> it's it's it's. But I I, what I I actually have to edit it down. I don't just release straight like you know vods. Uh, I don't feel like that's good TV. You know, definitely um, not when the when it's the night that I was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't worry. I'll, I'll get the good parts out. <laughs> uh, but it's but it's you know it it takes work. Now if I was doing this full time, I would be on top of it just like I was when I was doing it full time. I was putting that shit out right away. Like the next day, boom, you have an edited version of the last night's vod. But yeah. uh, I was watching um, uh, Dodgers. I was on Dodgers Channel, you know, and she has a she has her nightly vlog, coffee uh, or coffee, um, and then she also has her regular like r- regular content. Um, and it, what was it? She was playing. Oh, she's playing some game. I don't even know what it was, but it was just a straight up like thirty minute like chunk or X minute chunk of of a live stream. And she was releasing them like one day at a time, and right. I know I, I know I've done it in the past totally with like some of my let's play stuff. I told I I have, but like it it doesn't necessarily mean that it, it's it's good TV, you know? Like yeah, and it was like it, it was it was hard to watch, you know? Like Dodgers is really a great host, super entertaining person. Uh, but like when I tune in to watch this this thing and I realize it's just a chunk of a stream. It just starts like right in the middle of something. She doesn't say a word for literally 90 fucking seconds, right? And she mumbled something in there, sure, but it wasn't a word. And then and then she finally says something like, oh crap, I died or something like that. And that was it. It wasn't even entertaining, you know? Yeah. And, and, and then it was like 30 minutes. I'm not going to watch that. Like, no way. And especially when there's no context to it. Like, do I have to go back? Like... It, Am I not going to understand why she's quiet here because I didn't watch the previous <laughs> Am six I gonna Let's Plays? Am I going to get the story here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and, and I get why YouTube creators do that sort of thing because, like, it's sort of banged into your skull as a YouTube creator. Like, no, you need to release something new every single day and you need to mm-hmm. be coming out with new content constantly. And so if you're ever live streaming at all and you realize, oh, crap, I've now just used up because live streaming is also super time intensive. So you spend 12 hours a day live streaming. And at the end of that, you're like, okay, well, I haven't done anything on my YouTube channel. What can I possibly do? Oh, I know. I'll break up my 12 hour live stream into 30 minute chunks of there. Boom. Month of content. And <sighs> like, it makes sense, but it's just not enjoyable content to watch because like, a it's, <sighs> 
it, like it it feels super fake because it, everyone knows when they're watching it like this is a 30 minute chunk of a live stream mm -hmm. and in 30 minutes maybe nothing has happened and yeah when when i used to do let's plays uh and i actually jesse cox has done this too like i would record probably like an hour and a half at a time but i would Whenever I get to a good point, like beyond 30 minutes or so, like I'd get to a good point, I'd basically sign off and then I would stop and then I would fire it up again and I would do, I would basically do the intro and everything. So that way people felt like it was episodical. Yeah. Like I didn't want them to feel like it was straight. Some people saw through it. Yeah, I did record an hour and a half, you know, in one sitting, but I didn't want to put the whole thing out at once because like you said, I, I, I need content to spread over time, regular content to spread over time. Um, yeah. But it's... But oh, it's, yeah, the yeah. couple of the couple of let's plays that I did, um, which were both for mobile games. I did one for yesterday, and I did one for Meganoid. Uh, I did the same thing where I, I actually recorded the entire thing in like two or three sittings total. But it would be a, a span of like three or four hours, and I would literally say, "Okay, it's been about a half an hour of recording. Mm -hmm. I'm going to." do something or like i would just be keeping the the time in mind and i would get to a point where i would like okay yeah this is a good point to stop boom stop recording start recording again and go from there yeah and that's just a good way to make sure that when you're creating youtube content like that uh that is that it's good i think that the live stream thing it, you it, Putting live stream vods up on YouTube, you really have it. Like it's a super time intensive thing because you really have to do what you're saying that you do with the Space Engineers footage, where you go through and you cut out the live streams. Like if you go and you watch Sacriel's videos on YouTube, it's always like um, I haven't actually watched any of his videos in a while. But when I used to watch his Daisy videos a ton back in the Daisy mod days, he'd always be like, "Here's a brief introduction of what we've been doing in this given day," and he would like talk through like. Hey, I'm Sacriel, and this is what we're doing. We've worked our way up to the Northwest Airfield, and mm -hmm. we've been oh, looting yeah. around for yep. a little bit, yep. and blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. And he would talk about that as it's like going over some sped up footage or whatever. And then he would be like, and then suddenly something happens, and then he drops <laughs> into the video. And the, like it worked really, really well for that. But that's yep. the sort of thing that you have to do with a live mm -hmm. stream is go, with a live stream VOD, is go, okay, I know there's going to be eight hours of content here that is not good. Yeah. I need to get rid of all of that and do something else entirely. And that's how you do it. I want to also, while I'm thinking of it, before I forget, since we're talking about YouTube series, I need to plug this one that I came across. Uh-oh. <laughs> which is amazing. It's, so it's a cooking show. Oh, um, mm -hmm. But it's a cooking show in that there is food. And some cooking happens. So I guess it's basically the definition of a cooking show. Uh, it's called The Catering Show. Uh, and that's spelled K-A-T-E-R-I-N-G. Because it's the, the host is uh, two girls. It's Kate McLennan, I think, and Kate McCartney. Um, and they're like these two really, really bitter Australian women. And they are just fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, it is the most amazing thing on YouTube. So if you're listening to this right now, make a new tab in Chrome. Because I know everybody that, that listens to this podcast is cool enough to use Chrome. Uh, and go to YouTube and type in the catering show right now so that you don't forget. And then when you're done listening to this, watch every single one of those videos because they're amazing. <laughs> Uh, I found it. I just watched one. Sorry. Well, what were you saying? <laughs> no. Yeah. I watched. I watched like the beginning of the uh, the one of the more recent ones. Um, Which one is it? Oh no, it's not the more recent one. They kind of listed weird. Uh, the Mexicana Fiesta. Fest yeah. Fiesta. The, the the two best ones are um, Thermomix and We Quit Sugar. Those are the. Oh my god! Like just so just the attitude that I get from the first few seconds of the Mexicana one, yeah. like it's like I could I see what you're saying. I I, I, yeah. I totally like see one what of them saying. intros where they're like, "I'm Kate McLennan. I'm Kate McCartney. We're unstable. Welcome to the catering <laughs> show." <laughs> it's yeah. it's 
absolutely fucking hilarious. That is pretty good. Um. So yeah, that was that. I had to. I had to mention that good. before I forgot about it. Brought to you by. Brought to you by the, the catering, catering show. show. I don't know. Is there something? Store for details. For no. <laughs> Speaking of, well, actually, just a wrap a vessel. Uh, yeah. I don't see how it's gonna work out with the current climate of of, of game style, like game video delivery. However, uh, if they market it enough, they're gonna capture enough of an audience that's gonna that's willing to pay for that stuff. But I feel like the people, all the entire list of people that I see on here, it's like. They are essentially, to me, it's like, oh, that person's still doing videos? Oh, that person's still doing videos? Like, yeah. that's what I see when I go through this list of people that they have as their featured artists or content creators. Yeah, I'm, like, looking at their front page, because I don't actually have an account. Uh, I'm looking at their front page, and I see, like, a few people in their background, and I'm like, I vaguely recognize that person, but I don't remember why. Yep. Yep. But we'll see what happens. Um, I actually would would again. I would probably pay for the the. Well, I, I have a year free, but I right. could actually use it for um, keeping up on like just general gaming and pop culture news because it's curated. It's simple. <clears throat> just feed it to me, whatever. It's another source. But eh, we'll see. I'm not paying yeah. for it, so it's hard to say that I'd pay for it. It's free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but YouTube, uh, mm. they they've they've got a little bit of headlines this week. Um, yeah, with the whole live relaunch. Yeah, um, definitely. Which is pretty interesting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like we've been saying on this show for a while that Twitch needs competition. Like, mm -hmm. there's Hitbox, which is kind of okay. Like, Hitbox is sort of cut, caught in a catch twenty two at the moment in that there's no really great streamers on hitbox because there isn't anybody on hitbox to watch it because there's no really great streamers on hitbox and it's sort of this and, <laughs> and, the, and, and the great infinitum the great the great streamers on hitbox are being restreamed on twitch yeah exactly so like there's there's no reason for viewers to go there so since there's no viewers there's no reason for streamers to go there so mm -hmm. since there's no streamers there's no reason for viewers to go there and so on and i think azubu is kind of stuck in the same uh, sort of problem. The difference that Azubu has is that they have directly sponsored a bunch of streamers and said, "No, you're gonna only stream on our platform mm -hmm. because they know like this is this is what we have to do to be able to get people to watch us." Um, but Twitch is still very much far and away like the giant, which is why hearing that YouTube is getting back into live streaming, like it's relaunching YouTube Live, and Focusing specifically on live gaming and esports. That's interesting. That that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, because that's a lot of things to change. You know. Yeah, definitely. YouTube as a whole, <clears throat> their live stuff. You know th that sucked. Um, it had a couple of cool things. It was. It had okay. It had one cool thing, which was the like TiVo aspect yeah, of it. The rewind. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is super awesome. And like, if you're just hosting an event, it's worth doing it on YouTube for that alone. Like if you're, uh, I don't know, your PAX and you have a whole bunch, of, or your Polygon at PAX and you have a whole bunch of panels and you don't care if people see you in your chat room and most of your traffic isn't coming from other, like people watching other streams on Twitch, it's coming from your website, mm -hmm. then something like YouTube Live makes a ton of sense in that case because it's just better for passing a video feed to the user. Yep. But that's about it. That's about the only thing that they did better than Twitch. Yeah, and the part that sucks is that there was, there was always a crazy delay. Like, first off, setting, up, setting the whole thing up was, like, a, a mess. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then... The fact that you could have the whole stream taken down if somebody hums happy birthday, which actually happened. <laughs> uh, and then uh, just the delay. There was zero interaction with, uh, with, uh, with chat. And chat was basically like a live stream of comments. And even that didn't even work half the time. So that was... That way, and it was a mix of like Google Plus and YouTube accounts. So like you did, you know, Barack Obama's commenting on my video. You yeah. know, <laughs> like it was, it was, it's, it's just a clusterfuck like from, from beginning to end. Um, but but YouTube Live is something that uh, they YouTube needs to do something 
because gamers are leaving to go to stream, right? Streaming, everything happening now, now, now is, is happening. Uh, is, is, uh, that's the trend right now across the board, not just gaming, right? So it's like everyone's streaming. That's all happening on Twitch. The VODs and some other, there's a lot of great content on YouTube still, sure. But I guarantee you they've seen a huge decrease because of Twitch and people basically hanging out there instead of watching videos. Um, or they're watching fewer videos, I should say, because of it. Uh, on the other side, you have services like Snapchat. Uh, you have Periscope uh, and Meerkat, which are live streaming you know, from your phone Snapchat style services. Uh, one of them is actually a Twitter service, so you know that something's going to be embedded soon. You know, Vine, uh, Instagram, both support videos. People, are, the video services are that that take the amateur, uh, the amateur hour stuff away from YouTube, which is basically was supplying like a lot of their content, just shitty videos. That sometimes ended up being funny. That got popular, and that person ends up doing a ton of videos because of it, and they get popular. Like I don't know, Justine or anybody else that's a vlogger that gets popular for no reason whatsoever, like you know, Marbles, <laughs> right? Like these are people that started off with shit videos, and then they get popular, and those shit video makers are existing on other platforms. They're on Instagram, Snapchat. They're going to be on Periscope now and Meerkat. Like, they, they don't start on YouTube anymore. So YouTube has definitely seen a decline because of this yeah. stuff. Yeah, for sure. And it's the sort of thing that, like, YouTube needs to be, obviously, needs to be looking forward to what they can do in the future. And obviously, esports is exploding at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, has been for a while and it does not like people keep going oh the esports bubble it's gonna burst you guys the esports bubble you guys is gonna burst meanwhile <laughs> esports keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger uh so yeah no <laughs> um, but i i think bubble. and I, I think the fact that like we were talking um when we first started this podcast about how google was reportedly trying to buy twitch um, apparently that was actually a thing and they were beaten out by Amazon, uh, to actually, to, to purchase that. So of course then Google is going to look back at and say, right, well, we didn't buy Twitch, so let's revamp our YouTube live feature into something that can compete with Twitch. Yep. Just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, good. I was just saying, I do appreciate that, um, the official response to this article on the Daily Dot that I'm looking on uh, from Google, actual official response is an animated GIF of, like, a little girl just sort of going, huh? It's, <laughs> it's kind of hilarious. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link you to this. To this gift, I'll do my best to describe it to the, uh, the, yeah, you're better the folks at, listening at home. You're better at describing these things than I am. I put it in the screen. <laughs> it's just uh, sort of like huh? she's got this face. Yeah, yeah. She's got I this, don't know. Uh, what? What? <laughs> it's a pretty funny gift, guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, yeah, it's. They say it's something that's gonna happen this year. So that's that's a pretty big deal. And it's funny. Uh, I just saw a couple comments. Someone was like, "Oh, that's why they took it down." It's like, no, no, they didn't take it down. It's, yeah. it's still there. It's just really hard to find because they how shitty using it is. It. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the thing, so let's look at like, like Twitch's like pitfalls. Uh, I would definitely say that Twitch, Twitch is only feature that even remotely competes directly with, with, uh, the type of service that YouTube provides, uh, is their highlight feature because their mm. straight VODs is not a competition directly with YouTube. Yeah. I don't think there's very many people that will even sit there and say, oh, I'm going to just watch the VOD of this live stream later. Like, there certainly are some, uh, but I don't think it's, like, like it's kind of funny for all the, the complaints about, uh, oh, Twitch, you can't play music now or they'll mute your VOD. That matters for content creators who are pulling their VOD over to YouTube and then downloading it and editing it and uploading it again. Uh, like, if that's how you get a hold of what you did, then that sucks. But I feel like the majority of people at this point are recording locally as well as live streaming. Uh, and so, like, the VOD doesn't even matter at that point. Mm hmm Because there just really, there aren't many people. That, you can make a highlight and people will watch the highlights, and that's cool. But if it's just the full VOD and you don't bother to go in and make a highlight, no one's going to watch that. Yeah. 
And I mean, it's it's true. I mean, if you just look at the numbers of I like, go to a popular streamer who gets you know a thousand to five thousand views, uh, live viewers. <clears throat> if you go look at their vods, if they have them accessible to non-subscribers, uh, you'll see that the numbers of people that view the vods are like in the hundreds, uh, yeah, or less. And that's just the way it is. Like it's like first off, it's a pain in the ass to even get to the vods sometimes. Uh, yeah. Like if they're you, you click on highlights, then you click on a tab that says videos. Like their their GUI is just not conducive to what happened. It's always what's happening. Yeah. Uh, which is great because it's a streaming yeah, it makes service. Sense. Yeah. Yeah. But they they that that is still a pitfall on their on their part. They need to figure out a way to deliver that old content to people. Yeah, <clears throat> um, because YouTube is all about delivering content, you know, evergreen content, like day in day out. They could do that stuff. Yeah, uh, and so if they build a a steady streaming element, uh, then then you know, obviously they could they could really slam dunk all over this. The esports angle, I think, is probably the most interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, I get it. Like, I, I know that the that esports is continuing to grow. I mean, even us here at Zam, we have a number of esports ventures that we are uh, exploring uh, and executing on. But uh, I just find it interesting that they're not just going with just gaming in general. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think it I, it's a good sign for like even looking away from live streaming. It's a good sign for the state of esports and the continued viability of esports. That like ESPN has been streaming a ton more esports lately. Mm -hmm. YouTube now and Google are looking into fully supporting esports with their new YouTube Live thing. Like when companies like ESPN and Google are saying, "Yes, this is a thing we want to invest in," that's when you kind of know that esports is good to stick around for a while, guys. <laughs> it's, it's been around for like fifteen years already, <clears throat> but it's gonna keep to continue to be around as long as they're making games. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like with YouTube getting involved and focusing on esports, uh, YouTube already has a lot of connectivity, uh, more so than um, than Twitch right now. Mm. Um, in terms of like device uh, compatibility uh, mm. and in general, yeah. it could be your TV, it could be whatever. Like YouTube is basically built into like everything. Um, yeah. as a core app. Um, so smart TVs, Chromecast, mm -hmm. everything. So if you're looking at it from the perspective of okay, if they do a revamp and start focusing on esports, then they basically are just are saying we are going to bring esports to a lot more devices than Twitch does, and yep. that is going to to gather. And they're probably going to work out some exclusive stuff. I mean, they absolutely are, and they're going to start getting some of these huge, huge. Uh, events uh, and, and uh, tournaments and start streaming them exclusively and just because of YouTube's reach they are going to be able to probably really really flex on Twitch yeah well then like especially when you think about it in terms of like who would be doing something like this like even if I just look at it from the perspective of uh, Blizzard like I do a lot of work obviously with the Blizzard YouTube channel uh, or excuse me with the World of Warcraft YouTube channel and Twitch channel um and to me, it would be really, really cool if when I'm putting on a live event, instead of having to split myself between two channels and say, okay, we're going to have our YouTube channel where we put all of our like prepackaged videos for smaller scale consumption, but larger audiences overall versus a live stream, which we do on Twitch, which is it's a bigger deal to actually sit and watch this live stream, but there's fewer people on Twitch that will actually watch that. It would be so much nicer to be able to say, you know, you know what, we're just going to do this event on YouTube where we've got a ton of subscribers, where it can sit alongside other content that's similar, not the same, but similar. Yep. And this, this makes perfect sense. Like, this is something that... I will absolutely be looking into once, uh, like, maybe it's something that we want to simulcast to Twitch and YouTube. Uh, but it's definitely something that we're going to want to grab a hold of that audience. And I would not be surprised in the slightest if uh, a product like World of Warcraft or League of Legends or 
uh, basically any video game or video game company was able to look at this and say, okay, we stream on YouTube and we, we simulcast that to Twitch and the YouTube audience is two to three times greater at least. Mm -hmm. Like I would not be surprised in the slightest to see uh, the very first time that Blizzard ever streams on YouTube there is a significantly higher audience watching on YouTube than there is on Twitch. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. There will definitely be uh, more people watching on YouTube than on Twitch, especially when you have an entity that big. I yeah. wouldn't even be surprised if YouTube approached you guys, like, approached Blizzard as a whole, and was like, hey, make us your official streaming partner. And we'll, I don't know, whatever, massage your feet. I have no idea what deal they come <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it's probably going to happen because they're going to want to capture all of these, uh, all of these, uh, these companies. Yeah. Um, they're going to they're gonna hit up Riot. You know, they're going to be like, hey, next LCS, what's up? You know, they're going to try to, not, not, well, not upcoming LCS, but probably next year LCS. Yeah. Um, but they're going to try to capture some of that, uh, some of these huge, huge streamers and bring them over. Yeah, I mean, uh, YouTube or LCS has been on the YouTube live streaming. I don't know if it was this most recent one was or not, but it has been on on it a lot. But exclusive. Yeah, but not exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I I could see them going for that. I don't know. It would have to be a pretty, pretty attractive offer for a company like Riot or Blizzard to say, yeah, okay, we'll go ahead and make it exclusive. But you never know. Maybe they'll come in and be like, all right, well, we're also going to advertise your game in a ton of places for free will give you a hundred thousand dollars worth of advertising maybe that's the sort of thing that we exactly would be interesting yeah. to look into at that point i'm not saying blizzard would sell out but <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it's marketing it's all about budgets <laughs> no man blizzard so sold long. out <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 uh yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, I don't stream a lot. I don't even YouTube a lot, uh, unfortunately. But um, I I know that a lot of people like they enjoy streaming and whatnot. But to if you or if you're able to basically surface past content and monetize it more easily uh, and stream all in the same spot. I could definitely see YouTube basically one of this whole thing over. They just have to not fuck it up. Really, that's all they have to do. Just, just yeah. they can't fuck it up. That's it. Easy. It's yep. easy. <laughs> well, and I feel like they they had their one attempt, and they can learn from that and double back and come up with something better this time. Mm hmm. And it'll be interesting. Yep. It's gonna be cool. It's gonna be neat. All right, dude. Yep, that was fun. Yeah, we already, we already had an episode this week. I was, I was, I. We did. I I actually forgot about it. I was downstairs watching Blackish, which is basically the best show on TV right now. And and then you're like, oh, show. And I'm like, yeah. oh, bitch. Yeah. But we did it anyways. We did. We successfully a show. And you're sounding better. I didn't mention that. I feel bad. I didn't mention this at all. You're sounding much better. Oh, I'm feeling much better. That's it was good. the sort of like... One of those weekend flu sort of things where you're like, I'm going to feel like garbage for three days and then be totally fine. <laughs> On the weekend. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to make sure your days off are miserable. Well, like, I, I, it started on Thursday last week. So, like, I ended up taking two days off of sick time anyway. Mm. Or most, most of two days off of sick time. Uh, but Blizzard takes care of us, so I, it was all good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. All right. Well, I guess I'll see you next week. Yeah, probably. I'm going to play some more Pills of Paternity. Woo! Yeah, Pills of Paternity. Pills of Paternity. Viag game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If it lasts for more than four hours, then seek medical attention. <laughs>